What's going on? My Reefing fam, March here. Another episode of Fragbox TV. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, what are we going to talk about today? Today's going to be a vlog style update because I think you guys like keeping up with us and the digs and the corals and the fish. I just got back from Vancouver actually the other day. So shout out to the West Coast. Love it out there. Um, just wanted to, I don't know, come check it out, relax, do nothing for a weekend. It was a lot of fun. I was walking down the street and I actually saw a pretty cool, hey, how's it going, man? I saw a very nice saltwater tank inside a, a lobby of a building um, where there's a, it was a bank. I think it was HSBC on West Georgia Street. What I'm going to do at the end of this video, I'm going to post, uh, I'm just going to play that video. I shot it on my phone. I was just walking down the street and uh, it was pretty cool. Actually, large tank. I was hoping to do an entire video from this, but I didn't get enough content. It's only a couple minutes long. The security guard showed up and he was really friendly, but I got a little spooked. Anyways, I'm going to post this at the end of today's vlog video. If you want to see it, it's like, it's actually quite nice for an aquarium inside of a, um, inside of a business. I don't know. Sometimes when you see ones in restaurants or in like this, like in banks and stuff like that, they're not. They're not the nicest tanks. This guy, whoever's taking care of it. Anyways, um, you're going to hear me say all of this um, at the end. So just watch if you want to see. It's going to be at the end of today's video. It's like a double video special. Let's go on with this tank over here. Little lackluster in terms of the corals, actually. This has got to get some new stuff. But why I want to talk about it is these over here. These are some new snails that we got in. These are called Ninja Star Snails. So we don't get these ones in too often. And the appeal with them, I think, is the shell. They look really cool. So this is kind of like your standard, what is this over here? Margarita? What do we have in here? Margarita? I'm, I'm just like calling stuff out to Tia while she's over here having a lunch. Uh, a lot of times actually while we're doing lunch is when I'll pick up the camera. It, it gets kind of quiet around here so then I'll start talking and get things lively again. But these are very cool. I think we got them from Mexico. So very similar in terms of cleaning power to an Astria. And I think like Astrias they can't flip themselves, right? They have that kind of funny shell. They're a little bit more expensive than Astrias. They run about 10 bucks Canadian, but they're really popular. So I'm going to throw them on the site and I can tell you they are not going to last very long. One nice thing about them though, they don't share a shell with any hermits really. So um, you don't really, oh, there's a cool one, kind of like a golden one next to the cleaner shrimp. The hermits, yeah, they may pick them off, but less likely because like you see here, the scarlet, that's a very, they probably stole that from uh, a Sarath snail. So you have a better shot of, of not having them get eaten by mean hermits in the tank. I want to do a shout out to someone who made a comment actually. Um, Stuart Green, if you're one of our, I don't know if you're a regular viewer, but we do go through the comments and you made a comment on one of our last videos and I went ahead and took your suggestion. So I just wanted to give you a thumbs up and a thank you for that. Okay, so this was the video here. It was called Avoiding Failures in the Saltwater Hobby. And Mr. Stewart made a very, very, very nice suggestion. He said having a walkthrough, great idea. But he called me out on this, having the uh, that pipe that wasn't glued, it should be tied to something, stop it from moving. There's a possibility that it could get knocked, uh, creating weak joints, everything. If you go back and read the comment, everything he said was absolutely true. And I didn't see it. Um, like what I was talking about in that video is sometimes we can't uh, see these points of failure because, well, at least I can't because I built them. Anyways, he was 100% right. We do read the comments. I really, really appreciate that. So I'll show you what I did to sort of correct for that little fix. So he was talking, uh, he was referring to this pipe here, which is our return line for our new kind of holding tank. So this is water, do, 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 runs into here. And this was just sitting here loose. And that was an uh, accident waiting to happen. Somebody could easily knock that and could break this joint here. So it is glued together, it is fairly strong. What I did was just cut a little piece of um, flexi or acrylic here and siliconed it underneath. So this is now as you can see, not going anywhere. Something very simple that I didn't see and just wanted to say thank you for that. Really appreciate that comment, man. While we're down here, I might as well talk about this tank. It's just about done. I've gone ahead and thrown some power heads over here. I'll do one final quick wrap up video on this one so that I can get started on the next one over here. Ooh, little FCC update. You know what? This deserves a video on its own, but we have added some corals back in here. Lots and lots of water change. The water's looking good. I'm actually pulling off um, these radions that's going to happen next week. We're going to change the lighting on here. Two of them are going to go over to the that tank. I think we may implement some of the new Neptune skylights, which I'm really excited to use. 
So if you are a subscriber and if you've been around for more than a couple of weeks, you already know what happened over here with this tank. It's looking pretty good. You know what? I've added some corals, like I said, water changing like a madman, lots of carbon, trying to get out any contaminants, heavy metals that might be in the water. This deserves an update in its own right, but I'm just gonna show you, we did add some, uh, some hard coral down here. They look pretty good. At the Tortusa, that was looking good, but kind of uh, showing, I don't know. I'm seeing a little bit of white there in the tissue that uh, I'm not too happy to see a new Wontanabe Angel. Uh, you know what I wanted to do with this tank? Not what I wanted to do, what I did, I don't usually shit on companies on this channel. I would try and keep the channel pretty positive um, for the most right. But I took water from here and I sent it off to the States, to this company, ICP, which I used to be a very big fan of. So what you do is you take your water and they give you a little vial. You get a water sample, you send it off to them and then they give you this 40 point like lab grade analysis of all these things that are really tricky to test for that you wouldn't normally, you know, um, have test kits for. So I was looking on this tank because we went through that large disaster, um, heavy metals, contaminants, anything like that. I sent it off to them along with some other people's samples. So what we do here in the store from time to time is we'll do like a group ICP analysis water check because it's quite expensive for us to ship it down to the States. And what we do is ship it with FedEx Express so that you drop off your water sample here at the store. We all send it over in one box. It's kind of like a group, a group buy sort of thing. And I ship it with FedEx overnight so that you're getting the results usually the next day or within two days. So they're meaningful. It's not like if you, you know, you ship it with a normal postal service here, it'll cost you maybe 20, 25 bucks to get it down to the United States. And you're not getting your results back for maybe one to two weeks. So that's not really a useful amount. You know, the timeline is too long to make any sort of, um, uh, to get any sort of good readings. So what we do is FedEx Express. Anyways, I'm getting off track. I sent it to them along with other ones. Everyone got their results. This is the second time I haven't got mine. Called you guys. Uh, your customer support sucks. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. We strive to have very good customer support from business owner to business owner. You guys, I'm giving you, I'm giving you a thumbs down. You expect me to send out uh, another sample at my cost. I got to take this off the shelf and send it there. And you have no, um, you can't even tell me what happened with mine. Anyways, I don't want to rant too much about them. I, I like the service. I need you guys. Um, yeah, I do need you. I really wanted the results. Anyways, that is my little rant for the day. You guys, I don't think you've ever heard me complain about other companies or stuff like that on the channel. Usually if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna complain, it's because it's for a reason. So anyways, thumbs down for those guys. I'm going to send off water one more time. Hopefully we'll actually get uh, the results back because that's what we're paying for. Speaking about service, thank you Neptune Apex. If we're gonna talk about bad service and good service, these guys just sent us, uh, what was it, an impeller. So we use the Neptune wave pumps, these ones here in the store. It's become my favorite. Hey, what's up? We're gonna talk about New J in a second over here, but these have become my favorite power heads, I think on the market, maybe aside from the Nero 3 or the Nero 5 from Aqua Illumination, these ones you do need the, I think you do need the Apex controller in order to use them, but if you ever come in the store, you'll notice every single aquarium that's in here, we're running these Neptune wave pumps, uh, and we're running a few of them. There's five on this tank on our SPS tank, we're using four of them over here, and four of them over there. We used to use MP40s, we used to use Max Spec Gyres, Red Sea Reef Waves, I've tried them all. Anything that's worth trying, I've tried here in the store. These are my favorite large controllable wave makers if you have a Neptune. If not, I'm usually pushing people towards the AI Nero. What I'm trying to say is, because I wanted to give them a thumbs up, they sent us some, uh, some impellers here. One of them was out of warranty and I've seen them do that. Not okay, not just with us because we're a store. They take care of us because you know we use and love their products and they got our backs but i've seen them do the same with other customers if it's just slightly out of warranty um can't find your receipt stuff like that they just their customer service is great they really stand behind their products i'm sure some people are going to jump out there and start commenting and neptune sucks and they didn't help me for the for the our, our experience what, what they do with us and what they do with our customers they've always been great and uh, i thought that was really cool they sent us out this um replacement so we're going to go ahead and get one of these fixed and it's the first wave pump that i'm having to repair since setting them up here in the store two years ago so that's four eight 13 of them and i'm servicing one impeller 
uh, after two years and I'm pretty sure it's because a snail got stuck in there. We keep a tremendous amount of snails in all of our reef tanks. They're really, really good for cleaning. That's, how, that's kind of our secret to keeping our tanks nice and clean and algae free. Snails, use lots and lots of snails. I don't know what Tia's doing here, but her, her lid is off the tank. She's always up to something. If there was one tank that changed more than others in the store, it would have to be this one here. She gets crazy with the rock work, with the scaping. This tank is actually just about to get overhauled. Yeah, she gets, uh, she gets, she gets a little local with it. I don't, I, I can't do the same. When I when I have a tank set up, I do my best to never touch the rock work or the corals. I don't know. I, I get so used to the way a tank looks and the shape. She'll just one day like I don't like this anymore. She'll go and take this entire thing out and smash it to bits and pieces and then rebuild it. And um, she's an artist. She's very brave. I'm t I I cannot. I'm like physically unable to do that. My hand will start like shaking on the spot. I don't know if anyone shares that, that sort of problem that I have, but she's, uh, she's really good at it. And so, so it helps keep things very lively here in the store and on the channel. Speaking about the channel, I really, really want to do this um, live stream. Thank you to the people out there that have emailed me and showed me that it's actually really easy to set up a YouTube live stream. Now I need more help. What are we going to talk about? So we can set up a live stream and a camera and you can listen to my stupid voice for a couple hours but we need some topics or shoot me some ideas, you know, um, some emails, some thoughts. We'll go ahead and, and pick one of them. I was thinking maybe like a Q&A. Is that what you guys want to do? Uh, we'll take, you know, 20, 30 questions, sit around a table, answer whatever you guys want on the spot, live. You want help with your aquarium. You want to know what my favorite color is or my favorite coral or Diggs's birthday or why your torch corals aren't doing well. I don't know. You guys, you guys let us know because your comments and your views and subscribes actually help shape the content. We do sit down once a week or once every two weeks. We we'll go through the channel and be like, oh wow, that video did really great. Let's do more like this. This one got more thumbs up. This one got thumbs down. This one got comments, more engagement. All of it actually really matters to us and it's not for nothing. We are paying attention to it. We have, oh, another new exciting project coming in. This is what we call our sold tank here in the store. So it's how we keep track of stuff that has sold online and stuff that's going to ship out and we've outgrown it pretty quickly it's three feet not even three feet yeah three feet by 16 by 10 and it's just basically a holding and organization tank for us so that if someone online orders uh el diablo or cloudberry uh oh I, can, I don't know which one this is this is i'm gonna say cloudberry jason fox cloudberry chalice number 10 at 90 bucks or whatever it is we know that you're gonna get that exact little piece right there that's what you see is what you get um, on the site so this needs you can see it's full it's it's running at capacity so we want to do something a little bit larger from here all the way there to the reefer it's about six and a half feet it's going to be a custom tank i don't think it's worth doing a sort of youtube build series unless you guys really really want to see it um, you know if you want me to document every single build we do in the store i'll be happy to do it but the general idea this cabinet's going to come out I'm going to do a new sort of custom 2x4 cabinet and then I want to get shelving. So as a store owner, every little square inch, especially when you have a store that's this small, makes a difference. So I didn't realize that when I set up these cabinets, I would rather have uh, area for product. So you can see what we did here on, on these tanks underneath is really, really important for us. We imagine if we didn't have the space to fit all of the salt, heavy stuff, rock, sand, RODI stuff. Um, I w literally would not physically have the room anywhere in the store to put this stuff on the walls. We're, we're pretty much packed. We're getting down to the nitty gritty in here. This, you know, a couple spaces we could be a little bit smarter here and there, but we're going up towards the ceiling. So that's going to turn into more shelving space, a uh, new tank that's going to get plumbed into its own system. And then I'm basically more or less just stuck on lights. I think I'm going to do a combination of uh, Radeon T5, maybe a hybrid, because we're using Radeons throughout the store. We're using Hydras. Um, we're not using Kessel, but I think we're, they're gonna make a comeback. We're using some cheaper lighting options. We don't have anywhere in the store where we show off the Aquatic Life hybrid fixture that we um, we carry here. And we also use T5, we use Reef Brights. I like to have all the different options on display so that when somebody comes in, we can not only talk to you about different lighting options because that's one of the biggest purchases you're going to make in this hobby if you haven't already made it and you aren't already crying and your wallet hasn't recovered maybe you're watching these videos thinking to get in the hobby and you haven't pulled the trigger yet 
the lights are usually going to be the most expensive investment after the aquarium itself so i'd like to just have those kind of things on display to yeah like before display not just to talk about it but to show people so that's going to be one little project there oh right next to it we are going to be tearing down everything in this tank here the red sea reefer 250 is going to get a complete overhaul just got back from my trip and uh asked the staff think about ideas what can we improve always trying to improve stuff in the store they said let's redo this tank for one major reason actually a uh, little bit of a hair algae issue but that's not the main reason there is a crab in here that is like like this and we got to catch him we got to get him out uh, and he lives deep inside this rock and I think he has taken a liking to some of the euphilia because we have some in here and for whatever reason not doing well some of the zoas some of the acans so water parameters bang on and if we take these out of here move them to another system sorry i'm always burping i don't know why i'm burping on these videos but um, if we take them out they do they do well we put them back in within one or two nights they're back to not looking so good we think that it's this crab we've seen the claw come out a, a couple times and i don't see any way that we can catch them without taking the tank down it was getting kind of packed and full and youtube has spoken and i know you guys are not crazy about my rock work i think i'm just going to give the torch to tia the manager here at the store she does a better job than i do i know when to concede she is the escaping master there's no arguing that point uh, i tried to argue it in those you know those videos we did like rock wars tia always won by landslide so i think we're going to take out all the coral if there's anything in here you're local you want some of the I, yeah i was just yeah, yeah i was talking about wow you have good hearing where were you downstairs how did you hear that I was just shitting all over your, your rocking skills. No, no, no. I was telling them how you are the, the rock master and I'm going to give you the, uh, the torch of the reefer. It's yours. Yeah, to escape it. What? With approval. <laughs> with, with team approval. I think you should come up with the idea and I will execute the idea. Something that isn't two islands. I'm boring. Yeah. It's always the same. This is what we call two islands. March two, uh, two islands. You can see even my influence has as invaded when it's not my tank two islands look at this what do you see huh two islands there's no way all the tanks in the no. store could be two islands two islands this one has one island. i'm yelling i don't mean to. yeah this is one like, island like a small not if it was up to me it would have been two islands but no, it's too small. yeah it's two islands that's my i don't know that's how i do it i'm not i'm not that creative when it comes to uh scaping and rock work ask me to build one of the best reefing stores you've ever seen in this country no problem i got it that's 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 not my weakness my weakness comes to um yeah rockscaping so tia is much more creative than i am um better artistic abilities very good vision in in general so we're gonna maybe we'll just give you complete co creative control why don't i just step back huh you want me to feel part that's so kind of you yeah maybe i'll make coffee that day you know i'll just i'll just hang out in the background so we're gonna take it all out like I said, if there's anything in here you, you really, really like, we're going to pull all the corals out. So this might be a chance to grab some of them before they turn into little itty bitty frags. Rock will come out, new rockscape. I think we'll probably keep the equipment and we'll document it so you can see the big ugly crab that we're going to take out of here and uh, we're going to deep fry them with tempura and ham for lunch. I'm just kidding. Tia's a vegan. She's converted me recently and we're not eating the crabs here in the store. I think we're going to get in trouble with some PETA members that uh, watch our channel here. Oh, I'm going back to T5, actually. Hmm, maybe I talk about it in another video. No, I'll talk to you about it. No, 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 another video. Yeah, T5. I'm going back to T5 in the basement. I think I already talked to you about that. New corals coming this week. You know what? That should have been the first thing I talked about uh, at the beginning of the video. We have, we have almost nothing. We are, this is what we call dry. There's, there's not a lot in here. There's a couple green torches. There's, uh, you know what? I think I'm going to throw these on sale. If you're local, and there's anything in here you like or maybe you've been eyeing in the colony section um, jump on the site this evening with the exception of this one here this acanthophilia yeah yeah that thing that thing's crazy he's not going on sale it's here because it's very expensive it's a very nice coral it's a superman acanthophilia we don't get them like this often and it's nice because it's small acanthos come enormous this is something you could take and easily put inside uh, a nano tank like tia's evo right here you know somewhere on the sand bed even a 20 or 25 gallon. Usually when we get in acanthophilias, they are meaty, they're big, they're eight, nine, 10 inches across. You need a big 
big tank for them and then they only get bigger from there. So it's a, kind of like a more manageable, um, nice size. There's some cool torches. So I guess the stuff that's left is more on the high end, like the really expensive stuff or things that are quite rare that people don't really, mm, I'm going to say can't really appreciate what they're looking at. This is a very cool cactus, uh, orange crust pavona, pavona coral. And we don't get these in often. Uh, the ones that are remaining, we need the room. So we have corals coming, I believe it's Thursday night. They're going to come in super, super late. They land at like 1 a.m. So that's going to be one of the nights where I don't get to sleep, but it's okay because I do it out of the love for you guys. I'm going to stay up all night so that you guys can enjoy all the new corals. We've got to make some room over here. We have some other pieces, but this will be all full of fresh new um, Australian coral. Best of the best from the Great Barrier Reef. Some crazy, crazy stuff. One of the largest orders I brought in, I think in the last, I want to say year or two, COVID is more or less winding down here. Oh, sorry, phone time. COVID's more or less winding down. We got hit really hard uh, in Canada, at least in the Toronto region. Our doors were closed forever. We're only starting to get back into normal life. I would say like in the last month or two where non-essential retail shopping is open, we're over all that curbside nonsense. People are coming in and so I feel confident in bringing in um, a larger order. Oh, it's your local and you want a crazy, crazy, enormous rock full of zoanthid. Somebody traded this in. They needed space in their tank. It's actually here on consignment and uh, it's been grown out for I don't know how long. It looks probably a year or two of growth. Very healthy, colorful, pest free, uh, maybe 15 pound rock. If you've got a big tank and you're just looking to fill it in with a nice solid chunk of zoas, come check this thing out. Email us for the price. I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's like three, 400 bucks. It's here on consignment. It's got to sell in like the next week or two or it's going back, uh, going back to its home. But it's a very, very nice piece. Let me zoom out. Maybe you can see really how large it is. It's pretty cool. It's got, uh, I think they're Pineapple Express. Not think, I'm the Zoa man, I should know. These are Pineapple Express, rainbow incinerators, mixed in with some like green Hawaiian galaxy, utter chaos over here, Sunny D. These go by a couple different names. Pulpy Orange, we call them Draculas. These kind of look like pinwheels, but not quite. A little bit nicer, actually. Um, what else can I tell you for this vlog update? We want to do a customer appreciation event one of these evenings. So something we used to do before COVID, we had lots of uh, events here at the store. So the store closes seven, eight o'clock and then we would open up for, you know, whoever wanted to come, 15, 20 people, um, order a couple pizzas, sometimes get a case of beer, a couple bottles of wine, hang out. It was a fun way to meet other reefers in the hobby and just to socialize and gather. And now that we're allowed, uh, a few more bodies in the store. We're going to get back into doing that kind of stuff. If you're interested, you're here in the Toronto region and you want to come to one of these things, shoot us an email. We'll start gauging interest again. I'm not sure how the public's feeling about meeting in closed quarters. Uh, if you guys don't want to come, me and the staff are going to get the case of beer and order pizza and, and we'll do it on our own. Maybe that'll be our live streaming thing. But if that's something you're interested in doing, it's nice because um, I think a lot of people don't have, they don't really know too many other hobbyists, you know, it's you and maybe one or two other buddies. Maybe you've convinced a cousin or uncle to come on this crazy, insane, expensive reef keeping journey with you. So it's just a fun way to kind of connect with like-minded other individuals. We usually do a couple giveaways. We'll do like a fragging thing and uh, we will have a theme for the night. It's just, it's a couple hours after the store closes. It, it's fun. We're, we want to get that going again. Speaking about hours, we're getting into the busy season we're getting like coming up to Christmas. Um, our season here really is the winter, the cold months in Canada. It gets frigid. It's beautiful outside right now. You can walk outside with shorts, no problem. It gets very, very cold. You ain't walking outside with, uh, with shorts, I can tell you that much, but it gets really, really busy. So people move back indoors and the hobby like comes to life again. It's crazy. We do three, four times the volume in, in walk-ins and traffic and sales in the winter months here in Canada than we do in the summer. Summertime's a ghost town. So because of that, we're going to revert back to our pre COVID winter time hours. So that'll be an hour earlier on weekdays. So instead of 12, we're open at 11 and then instead of closing at seven, will be closed at eight. So you got an extra hour before and after our normal times to get in here, come say hi, shop, hang out, do all those regular fun frag box corals things. Um, I know a lot of you are not here in the Toronto area. And so unfortunately, what is she doing? She's always doing Tia. She's always up to something you blink and then, and then that's it. It's just, she's, she's crazy with this tank. 
but it's gonna give you more time. We just want people to feel, I think, less pressured and less rushed. You know, seven's a little soon. You don't, we don't want you to feel like you finish work and you gotta run, run to the store to grab whatever it is you need. So watch out for those changes. I guess just check Google or check our website. We're just gonna go through them um, this week. I wanted to introduce you to our newest staff member, uh, Jonathan, Jay, we've been calling him Jay. That's his nickname. So if you come in the store, make him feel welcome. Say hi, Jay. Oh, where is he? I thought you were Jay. No. Uh, anyways, we'll, we'll introduce him in the next video. He's downstairs doing his job, cleaning the skimmers. He's very good. So far, a very good mesh with the team. So that's what we look for here at Fragbox. If you're ever interested in working with us, drop off a resume because when we are looking to hire, we do go through our resume list first of people who have um, dropped it off or interested in working here and number one thing we really look for is like attitude you got to mesh with us because we're a small store there are five of us here when you come on board you're not just coming to work to frag and ship boxes you're literally joining like our little frag box familia the true the, the inside our fam you're, you're you're we're here and we're in close quarters in a small store so uh yeah so far so good we'll um we'll introduce him into in one of the next videos i think that's it for today's vlog update i think i talked enough I think I've asked you guys enough questions. I think there's enough content and enough, uh, enough to keep you busy uh, until the next video, which will come out tomorrow because we do a video a day. Isn't that crazy? Who's doing that? Huh? Only, cra only me. Yeah, oh, yeah, I am crazy. You know what? I'm good kind of crazy though. Only crazy people do a video a day. But uh, thanks for watching. Only crazy people do reef tanks. There you go. So crazy people, crazy reef tank, crazy store owner. Guys, if you like the content, please give me that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that. And we'll wrap this one up. Thank you for watching today's episode of Fragbox TV.